Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to maybe the most exciting video I will ever film on my channel. So you guys probably can kind of tell by the title already, but basically a couple of months ago, the Sims team reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to have a meeting. And I thought, hmm, a meeting? Sure. So I attended this meeting and long story short, the Sims team has asked me to build them a house for the new Sims 4 paranormal stuff pack. So that's right, my build is being shipped with the game. So anybody who decides to purchase the new stuff pack will have my build along with it, which is so, so exciting. I cannot believe I'm making this video. It just feels so, so unreal. So first and foremost, I do want to thank all of you guys for supporting me and helping me improve as a builder to get me to this point where I could actually have this amazing opportunity. And of course, thank you so much to the Sims team for reaching out and asking me to do this. It is honestly just such a dream come true. And I just, I can't believe I'm making this video and I can't believe the build is complete and it's actually like happening. And you guys are going to get your hands on it very, very soon, which is, very exciting and I really hope you guys like it. So in today's video, I am going to talk you guys through the process and also give you guys a tour of the build that I made so you guys can get a little sneak peek of what it's going to look like. So obviously, as you can tell by the title of the stuff pack, that this is kind of a paranormal haunted kind of stuff pack, which is something that I know the community has been asking for for a long time. So I'm really excited to be the one to kind of bring that to life with this build. But before I got started on the build, I did have meetings with the development team as well as the art directors so I could get a kind of feel of what they were going for. So the style they kind of wanted to go down was kind of new or Orleans, a little bit more aged and a little bit more eclectic and the first kind of thing that they said was they wanted the build to be colorful so you guys know that colorful builds are not really my strength I'm more of a neutral modern girl with little pops of color here and there. So it was clear to me that this build was going to be really colorful, eclectic, nothing really matched, maybe a little bit bohemian. And I'm telling you, I was so fired up when I heard this. This was the perfect opportunity for me to really push the boundaries and bring this entire concept to life and make something that I maybe don't usually make, but you guys know I'm always up for a challenge and I really think I did rise to the occasion and I love how it turned out and I hope that you guys do as well. So I can't wait to show you guys. Let's jump into the tour. So here's my build, you guys. I don't know why I'm so nervous to show you guys, but this was the final build that I had submitted, but obviously the build has to go through various performance testing and stuff like that. So the final result could look a little bit different than this. Maybe some of the plants would have had to get deleted because as you guys know, the build kind of has to be able to run smoothly on all different types of computer specs. It has to be able to run on like low-end laptops and stuff like that as well. So through their various performance testing, it might look a little bit different in the end, but I don't think too much will change. So I think this is still an accurate representation of what it's gonna look like. So I am also going to upload an entire speed build video with my entire like progress from start to finish. So if you want to see all of the you know changes that I've made and the various stages in the design process, I would encourage you to watch that video because this is the finished product. But let me tell you, it took a long time to get here. It, it wasn't, yeah, there were a lot of changes. <laughs> here it is. Basically, I put it in Willow Creek because I felt like it matched like the New Orleans vibe that they were going for. So I actually just put it across the street from the goth house. But when you buy the stuff pack, you'll be able to actually place this build down anywhere. It's kind of like the tiny living pack where it prompts you to place the build down wherever you want to. So this build actually comes with the haunted house residential lot trait, which is a new lot trait that comes with this pack. But here it is. It's really pretty. I mean, I don't think I've ever built something like this before, but 
what I was trying to go for, I guess, was something that stayed true to the New Orleans style. So I have like the big shutters and the colorful shutters and kind of like a big bright red door because I saw a lot of New Orleans homes had kind of a lot of like nice pops of color on the outside. Also, the kind of like tiered decks with the columns and the cool fences was an aspect that I saw was really common in New Orleans homes as well. And then I saw that some of the more extravagant ones had kind of like a turret aspect to it. So I thought since I wanted to make this kind of more like a haunted mansion, I would go for that kind of luxurious turret structure. Instead of kind of going for the typical like dark black rundown haunted house i tried to go for maybe like a more normal looking home like it was once a really beautiful nice mansion but over the years it has kind of become super overgrown and kind of creepy and haunted so like maybe many years ago you would have walked past this house and been like this is a beautiful home but you know over the years you know, paranormal activity has taken over. And now when you walk past, you kind of like run past because you're like, I don't even know if anyone lives there anymore. It's super overgrown. The fence is kind of scary, you know, that kind of vibe. So I thought it was kind of cool to make it more of a like pretty home, but there might be something a little bit wrong with it because why would you have a mansion and have such an overgrown lawn? I'm not sure. I was only able to build the exterior with base game, of course, because I was only able to use base game and the new pack. So the exterior is mainly just base game, but here's the backyard. Again, very, very overgrown. And I don't know, I like it. I think it's pretty. I think that it definitely captures the vibe. And I'm impressed with how much detail I was able to put in with just base game. So I hope you guys like the exterior. So let's get on to the main event, which is the interior. So they asked for color and I think I delivered. So if you guys have been watching my builds for a while, this may be a little bit shocking because this is totally out of my comfort zone, but I really, really like how it turns out. Here you can see a lot of the brand new build assets that we got with the pack. Honestly, so, so beautiful and so eclectic and bohemian, but I am so living for it and so here for it. So one of the main kind of design aspects that we talked about is making sure that the furniture doesn't necessarily have to match. Kind of like every little piece has meaning to it. They've traveled around the world and have picked up various furniture pieces here and there. So I tried to bring that to life maybe with these like little armchairs, how this one is like a deep cranberry color with a bright yellow pillow, whereas this one's a completely different styled armchair that's a mint color. So they're completely mismatching, which is kind of unique and maybe something I wouldn't usually do or you wouldn't necessarily see in modern homes. And then I just have a kind of black couch here to kind of ground the space. So for me, when working with a lot of color, I thought it's important to not just put tons of color everywhere. You have to have some neutral pieces to kind of ground the space. So in this case, I went for a black couch and a more neutral fireplace just because I went with obviously color on the walls and a lot of color in the armchairs and in the carpet and stuff like that. So throughout the build, you will see that even though they asked for color, I tried to pop in some kind of grounding pieces here and there that are black or white or neutral, which I think in my opinion makes the color not look like it's too much. So I decided to do kind of like a photo collage wall and I tried to do it in various places of the home just to make it look like the people that live here are very well traveled and they've collected a lot of like artifacts or art pieces or photography from their travels around the world. And I also have one there kind of like going up the wall in kind of like peculiar places. Again, I was trying to make this build, you know, not your typical home. Something is a little bit different about the people that live here. They're a little bit more eclectic, a little bit more bohemian. You can see that again here with this chest. Maybe they got this chest in like a different country and they have it in this bright red color. It's very unique, very different different. So over here we can get into the little dining room. You can see it. I have a plate because I was play testing this build. I think it looks really pretty and the colors all work really well together. And then over here we just have a little kitchen. Um, mainly just base game assets because we didn't get any new kitchen stuff with this pack. I don't think I've ever done a non like open 
completely open concept kitchen with an island but i understood that this was supposed to be more of a like older more aged home i wasn't going to add those modern aspects that i usually do like with a big open concept kitchen with an island and stuff because that just wouldn't fit the theme and the time period of this build so good job me <laughs> so over here i just have like a little bathroom again i tried to keep the wallpaper the same as here because i was encouraged to not use too many wallpapers or too many different wallpapers because it can like cause performance issues if you have like a different wallpaper in every single room so where possible i tried to like keep the wallpaper consistent so i decided to bring this into the bathroom and kind of go for like the same kind of earthy feel in the bathroom but yeah it's just a bathroom guys it's fine <laughs> so that's kind of the main area down here now the upstairs is where it gets kind of interesting so up here we have just a little one bedroom maybe a kid's bedroom um you'll see in the speed build that the bedrooms went through like very drastic changes so i encourage you to check that out to see like all the different options that i had initially chosen and it kind of just like flipped and changed many many times i agonized over this build more than i would like to admit just because there was just so many things that you could do and because I was only allowed to like submit one build, I had to make sure that it was like exactly what I wanted, I guess. So it was very stressful, <laughs> but very fun at the same time, obviously. So here's one of the bedrooms. Again, it's going for a little bit more of that aged feel. So the furniture is a little bit more worn down. I use a lot of the base game assets here and I even added this nice little macrame um, decoration here. And um, these new curtains are honestly so, so beautiful. And I matched them to this little armchair here. I thought like, because the room was so brown, adding a little bit of element of like matchy, matchiness was kind of like, kind of uncalled for, but kind of works if you know what I mean. Um, usually you wouldn't think to like match your curtains exactly to your armchair. That's like a little bit weird, I guess. But because this build was supposed to have like slight elements of things that are a little bit off, I thought it would be kind of cool and uncalled for to do something dramatic like match the curtains to a random armchair and even matching the yellow to the little beads in, the, in these curtains. So I don't know, it's just like little things like that that I tried to experiment with um, just to make sure that the build looked aged and old but also colorful, but not modern at the same time. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> but here is the second bedroom or the master bedroom, I guess. So again, I went with that photo collage that I tried to kind of keep consistent throughout the entire build. And something that I also kind of repeated a lot are these hanging plants. Um, so you'll see I put them like in every single room. I don't know, I thought it'd be kind of cool if the people here, you know, really liked plants and maybe, and it had something to do with like calming the vibes, the paranormal activity in this home or something. I don't know, I just thought it'd be cool to give them like some aspects that were repeated constantly throughout the build so that when you walk through this home, it kind of like makes you question things um, while also trying to keep it tasteful and well decorated at the same time. So with this room, I just have a more pink and red color scheme. So again, here I went for like mismatching end tables and just one lamp on one side rather than both sides just to give it more of that mismatch, nothing really matches kind of a feel. But I kept one side neutral and white just so that it wasn't like all these random colors everywhere. And then we just have this new kind of desk, which I love this desk. It's so, so pretty. And it's quite like small, which I kind of like. And I also use this new chair that's kind of aged and I really, really love it. So that is the master bedroom. Um, over here, we just have another bathroom. Here, I kind of went for the like tone on tone vibe just to make everything navy blue. So when you walk into this room, the floor, the towels, the carpet, the curtains, the faucet, it's all navy blue. What's going on here? <laughs> I was kind of just having fun with it, but in a way it kind of looks good. But on the other hand, you probably wouldn't do this. So to me, that makes it feel a little bit more creepy and a little bit more like a haunted house. 
So in here, this is just the hallway. I just put a couple of uh, decor pieces, a little place to sit and stuff like that. And through here, we have the creepy seance room. So this room is completely all white, which I loved. So this was actually a request from one of the art directors to make one of the rooms completely all white because we thought it would be kind of creepy to like walk in through a colorful home with like blue on the walls and all these different colors to walk into a room and it just be completely white. So I thought that that was a good idea too, but then I decided to add my own twist on it and put elements of red. And I feel like the contrast of like bright red against white makes it feel like kind of grim in a way. So this is the seance room. So this is a major aspect that comes with the new pack is you can have seances and you have a little seance table here. So I can't wait for you guys to discover all of those features with the new pack. But yes, this is the creepy seance room. But yeah, all in all, that is the entire build. I was able to use a lot of the stuff pack items in this build and showcase a lot of them in here. So I guess the overall goal for this build was to have a nice build that you guys could place down on any lot that you want as soon as you download the pack so you can have a haunted house ready to go and play in. So it's for that reason that I decided to go for a little bit of a larger home and go for a two bedroom home just to give you guys a little bit more flexibility in what you could do and what kind of stories you could tell. We wanted there to be enough room in the home that your sims could obviously like walk around and have the haunted elements and the haunted aspects occur in the home. So you guys will have to see for yourself how this all works. I didn't want to go down the path of it just being like a dark, black, creepy, rundown home. But that's why we kind of went down this more colorful, eclectic vibe, just so you guys can come into this home and kind of create the storyline yourself and kind of take it down whatever path you guys think will be best for your guys' stories. So the house isn't totally completely haunted to the bone yet but i mean you could take it there if you want to and you probably will so i think that this home lays down a good framework for your sims to live here and someone walks in and they're like oh this is nice it looks good but maybe there's something off about this home but i'm not really sure and that's where the paranormal activity comes in. So that's pretty much the home. I really like it. I really hope you guys like it. I think that despite it being so out of my comfort zone, I honestly think I rose to the occasion. And I think it's a good home that you guys can put into your game and, you know, take it wherever you want to. If you guys want to live in this home and have it be super haunted and then slowly try to like cure the home and make it unhaunted and like clean up the yard and clean up the vines and stuff like that and kind of do a renovation and tell that kind of story, I think that that would be super amazing. Or you can make it become even more haunted, you know, start changing it darker and more grim and stuff like that. I think that there's just a lot of different possibilities for you to take this in either direction and that's why I wanted to go for a home that kind of looked like this. I hope that you guys can see yourself playing in this home and playing the pack in this home. But yeah, I'm going to end off the video here. Please do go watch the speed build to see how I you know, brought this entire home to life. You'll also be able to see more like items and color swatches of those items too because I kind of go through all of them and try a lot of different color combinations and stuff. So if you want to get more insight on the items and stuff, please go watch the speed builds. And I will talk a little bit more about the process of like getting feedback from the developers and stuff like that and all the changes that we made throughout the process. But besides that, I do want to say one big huge thank you to you guys for all of the support. Again, I 100% recognize that I would not be here in this situation without you guys. So I cannot thank you guys enough for um, helping me every step of the way all the time. Um, and of course, thank you so much for the Sims team. 
it was such a pleasure to work with you guys on this and I can't believe that I had this opportunity so thank you guys so much but besides that I really hope you guys like the build comment down below what you guys think of the build and also what kind of paranormal storylines you and your sims are going to play out in this build and remember that this is the build that is being shipped with the sims 4 paranormal stuff pack so if you do decide to purchase the paranormal stuff pack you will get your hands on this build built by dr ashley <laughs> you guys so much for watching today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it i cannot wait to read your guys comments and i'll see you guys all in my next video bye everybody